In this free head tutorial, I'm going to show you a very basic workflow needed to take a 2D plan such as a DWG or SVG that shows the 3D object from different viewpoints and convert it into 3D. Now it must be stressed that this is a simple plan, but it will pave the way forward to deal with more complex plans, such as this future Patreon request. I'll leave a link in the description of this video for the SVG file that I will be using in this tutorial. This is contained within a free post on my Patreon page, so you can download it and follow along. So I'm in FreeCAD, I'm going to start a new document. With that new document, I'm going to import my 2D file. So this one, we're using a basic SVG. And this could be a DXF, a DWG. It's all the same process. When I open it, I'm gonna open SVG as geometry. Depending on the input file, you'll get different options. Very basic file. And if I was using something like the part design, I will just create this without the guide. But this is simplified, so we get to know the workflow of creating 3D objects from 2D files. When you import something like this, you'll normally get these guidelines. And sometimes they can just be a line going through the middle without any of this, or they could be a line going down to the side and you'll have a number of views. Here we've got the top view and the side views, and these lines show the centers or the alignment between those views. As you can see, these are our alignment, so we need to align these together. The whole idea is to overlay two views. So from here, I can see that I need to create this rectangle and pocket out these circles from the side. This is a very simple object to create, but if we was creating this from the 2D drawing, it was more complex. This is what we'll do. First, we need to group these together. So if we look to the left, we see we have a number of edges and number of geometries like circles, etc. in here. The guides will normally be dashed lines. So instead of this, you'll see something like, go to the view, the draw style dashed like that. First thing I need to do is group these into the individual views. So we use the group on the standard toolbar that places a group in here. Next, I want to isolate the geometry. So let's come out to edit and use the box selection and draw a box around our top view. See in the tree view here, we just click and hold one of the tree view items and drag it into our group. Let's rename the group, right click, rename. And this one's going to be top group. Do the same for the other. Edit and box selection. Let's select that one. You can control select from the screen or control or shift select from the tree view. Let's add a new group and drag those items into that group. I'm going to rename the group. This one's going to be side group. So we've got our top and side views. Now often, if I come out to view and toggle axis cross, see our geometry is off center. And this is because where this has been created, zero, zero is in 2D space, and it's often at the top left of the page. This is quite common with such file formats as SVGs. When we start converting the geometry, so I will make this here a closed wire or profile to a strewed, then we need to move this into position before we convert it. So it inherits this point of origin as its origin, rotation point, transformation point, etc. We also need to align both of these views as though they were cross sections of the object. Let's show the grid if it's not already available. For alignment, we're going to use the move tool and also the rotate tool. We'll also be using the snapping options. Now the snapping options are available from the toolbar. The ones we're going to use is the snap lock, which turns it on, snap endpoint, midpoint, and center. These are the basic common snaps that you'll use. If you don't see them on the toolbar, then they're available in our status bar down here, and a long click will access them. And now 
I'm going to try to align these two shapes. Now normally we could align these two circles if they're the same size. So we must let the group use the move tool or modifications and move. Now we're looking in the panel here and you can see we've got relative and global checked. I'm just going to turn these off. For general movement and snapping, we don't need those. So if I hover over, say, this circle, look at the circle we've snapped to the vertex of that circle. Click once, we're moving this object. If we look to the left, we see the copy is unchecked and the modify sub elements are unchecked. So it doesn't create copy when we move this. So what we're looking to do is match where we snap into that circle. So we snap here, we center that into our other profile, and we just need to rotate it. I'm going to hit Control Z, and I'm going to select the circle and hit Delete. So now we haven't got a circle to deal with. So what happens in this scenario? So let's click the side group, and use the move tool. I can still snap to the center of this line. So we could use that method, but often it's not that easy. If these lines were moved, I'm going to take this line and use the move tool. So you see I've selected the line from the screen, use the endpoint, and I'm going to move it this way. We'll extend it outwards. Now I've got nothing to snap this to. I'm using the touchpad navigation type. This means that my shift key is used in my navigation controls, but the shift also is used to lock the axis when you're using the move tool. I need to free this up. Let's just change that to CAD so my shift now is free. I'm talking about the shift button, so let's hover over that now. So now I'm just using the mouse. If I hold down shift on the keyboard, what will happen as I move out, I move in line with that point. So I'm gonna bring this out about here. So you see this in some 2D files, that the center is out here somewhere. And the same with this one. So I'm going to click on this line and move it. I'm just selecting the line from the screen and moving the line. Hold down shift and bring this out somewhere over here. So if I was aligning this now using the side group, it becomes a lot harder. Let's use the move. And if I try to use, say, the end point and start to this one, it is centered along this way, along this way, but it's not centered along this way. So that gets it centered along one axis. So now I've got to center it along the other. So I'll take the side group and use the move now and try to say, take this point. Then I start snapping to the center point here. And this is where you hold down the shift again and move out from that point. So I'm holding down shift, keeping it held down and move out. And you can see the snap has taken to that center point. So I just click, that's centered that correctly. I now want to tackle this from the side. Let's come around, I'm going to select back to touchpad, my preferred style for navigation. And we'll come around this way. So we're looking at the front. I want to rotate this now. So I need to rotate this around this way. To do that, we need to change our working plane. So it needs to be on the front. Reason why, if we start the rotation, it's going to rotate around this working plane, so around the Z axis. Select the front, make sure nothing's selected. Come up to the utilities and select plane. Look down and select front. So now we're on this working plane. Let's add a bit of angle so I can see what I'm doing and select the side group. This time we'll come up to the modifications and rotate. So we're rotating this now. The snap is still the same. So we're snapping to the shape. We can snap to other shapes as well. So I'm snapping to the other shape here. If I look from the front, I can see that if I hover over here, that's the center point. So we've got that snaps midpoint kicking in. The first selection is the rotation, where it's going to rotate around. So select front, hover over the center, click, 
and we get this line come out. So this is coming out from that center point there. The next one is what we're going to manipulate to rotate it. So I want to snap to this point here. Click again, and now we can rotate this. Let's set the front view, makes it easier. There we go. If we look to the left, we can see the rotation. So we want this at 90 degrees. So we can just type in 90 on the keyboard and hit enter. We've now got our cross sections and we can start manipulating the geometry into wires, closed wires. So to do that, we still need the draft workbench. We're going to use a number of tools and these are the upgrade, upgrade selected objects into complex shapes and downgrade does the reverse. We also may use the draft to sketch. Let's select the top plane and deal with this one first. So this is our top group. Let's hide the side group, click on the eye. May want to hide also control selecting these two lines, pressing the space bar. So I've hidden inside the group those guidelines. Got a number of edges here. So we can either select them from the tree view or again use our box selection. So edit and box selection and draw around those edges. Now remember what I was saying about the center point. If I try to upgrade this now using the upgrade or the modifications and upgrade, this will upgrade to a wire. But if I right click and transform that, notice the center point. Let's cancel that. So this wire can be extruded, but the point of origin will be here. Let's just delete that. The edges will be hidden, so I can select them. Just select and press the spacebar, making sure we hide these here. So we need to move this into the center point. We need to move them both together. Let's first go to view and toggle axis cross. So it's easier to find the center. And I'm going to add a point and we'll drop it say over here. So this single point I'm going to snap to. I click on the point, we've got an X, Y, and Z position. So that's zero both of those out. This just makes it easier to snap to. We could use positioning, but this is a far easier method. Now, if I look at my profiles, I can see if I'm looking from the top, I have this center point here, which is part of the guideline. Let's make this a little harder, clicking on the line, pressing the space bar, and also this one as well. So now when I look from the top, I haven't got anything to snap to, but I have the center of this line here. Come out to edit and box selection, and select all of those. You can see it's selecting the elements within, but it's not selecting the groups, which is what we want to do. We select the groups, control select those, then use the move tool, modifications and move. The snapping kicks in, so we should be able to snap midpoint on this line. Click on that, and then we move the mouse up to this point here and click again. So now that is centered. If we try to do that with a box selection, we'll be moving the individual elements and they'll just disappear from the screen. So be careful of that. We now have our shape centered and we can work on our wires. Let's hide the grid so it's out the way. Also view and toggle axis cross. And the point, we don't need either. Let's delete that. So now we can use the geometry within to create our wires. So our first wire is the top group. We've got our guidelines in here, which are invisible. Let's hide the side group. We can either select them using control select, or use a box selection. And then we want to go to modifications and upgrade. That's created a wire. So this should be a closed wire. And we can check that with a geometry check. Say using part workbench, 
and use the check geometry. Run and check on that shape content. We can see it's a wire and we should have, if we follow down, is closed equals true. So we've got closed wire, which was strewed in the part design without any problems. Let's go back to the draft workbench. We don't need the top group anymore, so we can hide that. And now we have a side group. I'm also going to hide this wire as well. Press the space bar on that. Hide the guides. Click on press the space bar. This is slightly different. And let's go from the right side in that we have either one profile or three, depending on how we're going to deal with this object. Personally, for this one, I would just extrude this profile, but you could extrude these individually or extrude the top profile, the square profile, and pocket these through. So let's have a look at the side group. If I box select these, so edit box selection, select them all, and then go for the upgrade, modifications, and upgrade. If we look to see what's happened, it's actually made three profiles. What we've done now is created all the profiles we need from the imported file. Let's hide the side group. Let's come over to the part design and start using these now. If this was a more complex object and we was using all of these as profiles, then I could say, take my first profile from the top, the top view and pad this one. So let's create a new body and we want this wire. So wire, if we drag it into the body, it will come in as a base feature, which we don't want. That's control said that. We can go back to the draft workbench, select the wire, come up to modifications and draft sketch. This creates a sketch now, not inside the body. Make sure you take the wire and press the space bar to hide it. Let's go back to the part design and drop the sketch inside the body. So take the sketch, look to the side, and we can pad that. And because we're symmetrical, we can use a symmetrical to plane and pad this up to the desired height. Let's hit OK. And then it's the same with the others. So if we look within, we've got wire one and wire two, wire three. We want to take both these wires and convert those as well. So that's come back over to the draft workbench. Control click wire one, control click wire. Let's actually hide this body so we can see what we're doing. So we want wire one, control click wire three, modifications. Draft a sketch, hide those wires, they're still highlighted, press the spacebar. Drop the sketch inside the body, show the body. Y2 is getting in the way, so let's press the spacebar on that. And now we can take that sketch back over in the part design. Let the sketch, use the pocket, symmetrical to plane and we're going to go through all and hit OK. So now we've converted our SVG to a 3D object. We've learned about the draft workbench, we've learned about the move tool, and we've learned about the rotation tool. It's a very simple introduction to using the draft to convert 2D to 3D. Hope that was useful, and look forward to seeing you in the new video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.